So this is part two of the custom root view controllers. Uh, what we're doing is we're going through making um, a view controller controller um, <clears throat> using a custom root view controller. Uh, we're going to do this in three ways. Once with a custom root view controller, uh, then with a tab bar controller, then with a UI navigation controller. The app that we're making is this one. We're swapping in and out uh, these six different views uh, and putting them onto the screen at different times. Uh, what we did in part one uh, is we uh, were working our way through the checklist. Uh, we had got as far as getting the uh, roles home and info up on the screen. So we had made a place to um, an IVAR for the roles home and info view controller. Um, and we'd done this line. We'd removed the main menu from the screen um, and we'd put up uh, that uh, roles home and info view controller. Uh, so let's go ahead and run it again. Um, so when you run it, you can click on the campus map um, and it'll bring up this view controller. Uh, this actually uses a scroll view, which is kind of neat. Um, so UI scroll view is something you can implement. Um, and you know, you can pinch and zoom. Um, you can scroll around. This is the Rolls Holman campus, by the way, for anybody that's not uh, not familiar with it. Um, it's a nice little campus. Um, and what we're going to pick up with today um, is we're going to start picking up with uh, the rest of this. So, for example, clicking on the Done button does nothing. Uh, so we're going to fix that up. Uh, we're also going to make it to where um, that animation comes in and it does some type of animation um, instead of just appearing. Um, this little zoom to go back to normal, that was actually unintentional. Um, I could probably fix that in the code, but I'm not really worried about it. What I'm saying is I want it to like, this first page to like curl away or something like that. Um, so that's actually what we're going to play with next. Um, so we're going to improve upon uh, these two lines. So these two do the core necessities of they remove it, um, they add the new one. Well, what we're going to do um, is we're going to make a helper function. Uh, let's start by calling this helper function, then we'll go write it. Um, so what this helper function is going to do um, is we're going to say transition uh, from view controller, and you know we'll pass it in a view controller to view controller um, with animation. So this is the function that we are going to write. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy it right now. Um, and I'll just go ahead and paste it at the top. I'm going to be lazy. Um, <clears throat> one way you can avoid making prototypes types is you can just put them at the, uh, <laughs> at the top of the function. Um, so this thing is going to return nothing. Um, and it's going to transition from a view controller. So we're just going to say it's going to get passed down a UI view controller. So this is our from view controller. Um, and then it's going to also get passed to controller to go to. So our to view controller. Um, and then for this last part, we're going to pass in an animation. <coughs> the function that we're going to use for animations, um, if you bring up your help, um, and you look up uh, UI view. Uh, we've done animations with views before, um, so this is nothing new. Uh, now that 4.2 is everywhere, it's time to uh, start always using the animations with blocks. This time though, instead of being an actual animation, this one's going to be a transition. Um, so the one that we're going to use is we're going to use transition um, with view duration animations completion. Um, so this one is um, the one that we're going to go ahead and use. Uh, so let's go ahead um, and figure out what we need to pass this function. And you can see what we're going to pass this function is we're going to pass it in um, UI view animation options. So I'm just going to copy that um, and I'm going to paste it in right here. So what's going to get passed into this thing um, is this is the uh, animation uh, type is what's going to get passed in and then I can um, do an opening curly brace so that's going to be the function that I'm going to make 
Um, I'm going to just leave myself a little note to do um, implement. Cool. Uh, let's go finish calling this function uh, just because we're in the middle of calling it. So when we call this function, we're going to pass it in whatever the from view controller is. Um, and in this case, that is self.main menu view controller. And the to view controller in this case is self. Uh, Rolls Holman info view controller. So I just stole it from right here. Um, and then the with animations, let's go back and look at our help. Um, so there are a bunch of different animation options. Um, and it says for a complete list, see this link. So I'm going to click on that link. The ones we care about are these. Um, so these are our five good options. Just so I've got them handy, I'm going to go ahead and paste them into my code. So I'm going to pick one of these five. Um, if you want to, you can get rid of the uh, extra information there, which you no longer need or care about. Uh, so for this first one, what I'd like to do um, is I would like to make it appear as though um, the main menu is on top. Um, so to make it, it kind of appear as though it was on top, um, what I think looks best is if you do a curl up, um, then it'll look like this other thing is behind it. Um, so we're going to say, hey, curl up. Cool. So this is going to call it. Um, it says take this one away, uh, put this one up. Uh, so let's go write this function. So what this function is going to do um, is it's going to use the um, class method uh, transition from view, or actually I'm going to use the other one, transition with view, uh, duration, uh, options, animation, uh, completion. Um, I think we could use the other one as well. Um, the other one might be easier. Um, but the one I used in whenever I was testing this was the other one. Feel free. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this uh, top one, uh, but if you want to use this one, um, it might be an even better, better choice. It looks like it should work just fine for what we need. Uh, let's do this. Let's implement it with this one because I've, I've tested it before. Um, and then after that, I'll pause it and I'll try the other one too, in case you're curious. Um, so to try with this one first, uh, transition with view. Uh, with view is the view that's kind of like that will contain both of them. So like it's going to contain the one that's going away and it's going to contain the one uh, that's coming in. Um, and in this case, that's self.view. Uh, we're in the root. Uh, the root has a view. Um, and this is kind of the containing view. Uh, duration, you can decide how long it lasts. Um, I'll just put it in for a second. Uh, the options, uh, this is what got passed in. Uh, so this is the animation type. Uh, the next two are these code blocks. Um, so these code blocks, the way these work um, is it's kind of like um, it's kind of like an anonymous inner class for other languages. Um, and the way they look is where you would normally write the function, you just put a little caret symbol, um, and then anything that's passed in, you put in parentheses, just like a regular old C function. Um, and then um, these, you don't ever have to worry about if they return anything. If they return anything, um, the function that um, is calling it will will know about it, so you never would have to type it. Um, so you say caret, um, what gets passed in. Um, if it's nothing, you can just leave off the parentheses. Um, opening curly brace, closing curly brace. Uh, down here with the completion, uh, you can type a caret, um, a caret, and then you can type uh, what gets passed in. So what gets passed in is actually a bool uh, called finished. And you could actually change the name if you wanted, just as long as you used it within it. Um, but we actually want to uh, to do nothing on completion. Um, actually, if you wanted to do nothing, what you could do is you could just type um, you could just type nil if you wanted. That would work just fine. Um, I kind of like to leave it blank though, in case I change my mind later. It also reminds me of how the syntax works if I ever come back to it later. Um, and what I want to do inside here um, is I want to take the one that's going away. So I want to take the from view controller's view and remove it from the super view. Um, and I want to take the to view controller's view. Oops, I always do that backwards. I want to take self.view 
um, and add the sub view uh, to view controller view. So let's go ahead and test this. Um, we've gone to a lot of work uh, to currently make it just like to currently make it work just like it did before. Um, the only thing we've added is we have added a transition um, style. So let's run it and let's see if uh, let's see if what we're currently doing is working. So when we hit it now, it should curl up. Cool. Um, and then we currently don't have a way for it to go away, uh, but you can see that it did that nice curl up. Um, and just because I'm curious, let's see if the other one option would have worked just fine too. So let's, uh, I'll try to do it real quick. So I think you could also use the UI view uh, transition uh, from view uh, to view duration options completion. Let's just try, uh, so from view, um, so the from view controller's view to view, the to view controller's view. Duration is one second. Uh, options or just be the animation type. Completion, I'll just say nil. Um, let's see if this works just as well. Eh, seems to work just as well. Um, so you can use either one you like. <clears throat> Another little detail um, is that view controllers uh, have these things called um, view will appear, um, view will disappear, view did appear, view did disappear. Um, and in general, it's good to go ahead and call these things. Um, and so what you should do is you should just say, hey, from view controller, um, view will disappear. Um, and you can choose whether you want to let him animate as it goes off or not. Um, that's up to you. It depends on how long this animation takes. Um, and then, hey, to view controller, uh, your view will appear. Um, and then when it's done, uh, we should do the we should do the did step. So, hey, from view controller, uh, your view did disappear. Sure, you can animate. Um, and to view controller, your view uh, did appear. Um, and so you should always call these things if you're doing a, a custom uh, view controller um, because this is how the view controller, they might put code in here, somebody else might make the view controller um, and they might expect that these things are getting called um, and it's your job uh, to actually call them. Um, that won't come up in this app but it's a good, uh, it's a good example. I think the book did this as well. Cool, so now we've got, um, now we've got our transitions working the way we want. Uh, we've got two that show up on the screen. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to make this done button um, send a message to the root view controller um, to take down this view and put back up the main menu. Um, so you can see <clears throat> we added some stuff here. So this is the, uh, the helper function. Um, and then this is calling the helper function. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take care of that done button. Uh, we're going to start off in the child um, and do these steps. Um, and in fact, I was nice to you, um, and these steps should already be done. Let's go look at them, though. So in the roles Home and Info view controller, uh, you'll find that there's already a protocol. Uh, this protocol is called the roles Home and Info view controller delegate. Um, it has one method, uh, roles Home and Info view controller did press done. Um, and it passes a link to itself, which is unnecessary in this case, but good, good practice. Uh, there's already an IVAR for a delegate. Um, and then there's already a property um, with an assign, um, and it makes sure that the delegate implements this protocol. And then there's already a synthesize for it as well. Um, so it should be all set. Um, and then it goes ahead and calls the delegate, um, and it calls this method on the delegate. So that's why um, all four of these went ahead and got an X, because uh, they're actually all already done. So those steps were easy, because I didn't want you to bother doing them yet again. Uh, but we will go ahead and implement it um, in the root view controller. So that step we will have to do. So in the root view controller, um, we're going to have to implement a delegate. Um, implementing delegates. Um, and iPhone programming pretty much go hand in hand. You do that a lot. Step one, claim you implement it in the uh, interface file. 
Uh, step two, I like to always make a little pound pragma area. Um, I also like to stick the word here, that way I can hold down command and double click on it. Um, it'll take me to the protocol where I can copy out the methods, back back, paste them in. Um, and so now um, we're being told um, that they press done. Uh, so what we're going to choose to do is we're going to um, animate um, the reverse. So we're going to go uh, from the info view controller to the main menu. So I just kind of swapped uh, from above which direction I was going. Uh, also, I'm going to do the reverse of up. Um, I'm going to do a curl down. Um, so there we implemented the protocol methods, but there's one more step. At some point we need to set the parent as the delegate. Um, so we've implemented uh, the delegate, now let's set him as the uh, delegate. Typically I do the setting as the delegate whenever I create it. Um, so here's where I created it. Um, and so right here is where I'm going to say self, roles, home, and info view controller delegate um, is self. So this actually sets the delegate property so that it will call this object uh, when that activity occurs. Let's run it and see if it's working. So I can hit the campus map button, um, and then hopefully when I hit the done button, it will transition back. Cool. So what we've done so far um, shows like the appropriate use of a delegate and a protocol. But I'll say that um, what we've done so far, we could have done with a modal view controller, right? So we could have done this modally. Um, so for example, from this one, we did this one modally, right? So it pops up and down. That's a modal view controller. Um, but then this one we did with our custom root view controller. So really to show the value of why you want to do like a custom root view controller instead of just doing modal things is because some things you can't do modally, like they're more complex than doing it modally. Um, but this little part one, yeah, we could have done this modally. Um, but we kind of needed something to get us going. What we're going to start doing now, though, is something that really needs a custom view, root view controller, and that's the academic buildings. If I click on the academic buildings now, um, you can see nothing happens. Um, that's because we haven't written any code for it at all. Um, if you go to, uh, to that area, um, it's just totally blank. Um, so let's see, where is that area? Yeah, right here. So um, the only thing it did is it logged a couple messages, um, and I'm sure if I look at it, yeah, you can see they're on here. Um, so let's start in with uh, let's start in with that one. So the first thing we need to do for the halls um, is yep. So this is working. That's great. Um, <clears throat> is we need to start in with the memory management step. So this is kind of step one. Um, so we're going to need to create um, an IVAR, a property, a synthesize, and a release. What we could choose to do is we could choose to make an IVAR for all four of them. Um, that actually would be fine in this example. We know that there are four of them. We could just make four IVARs. But whenever I do examples, I like to not only show you the core features, but I like to also show you other things. Um, and what we're going to do this time is there's a, um, a technique that's used a lot in iPhone programming. Um, where you use a dictionary to help you with lazy loading. And the way it works is you ask for an object uh, with a particular key, um, and if it exists, then great, you use it. Um, if it does not exist in the dictionary, uh, then you add it to the dictionary. Um, and then if anybody ever asks for it again, you've already loaded it. Um, and if you ever get low on memory, you can throw the dictionary away and kind of start all over. So we're going to use that style um, for memory management uh, with our academic halls. Um, so let's just go ahead and uh, add a mutable dictionary uh, as an IVAR. Um, and what we're going to do here, um, I in, in showing you different things, um, just to uh, practice um, that, or more to show you that a protocol can be in its own file, I actually put this protocol in its own file. Um, and it's also got a couple um, pound of finds in here that we'll need. Um, so I just went ahead and added this now. Um, so this is the change hall protocol. Just showing you that it can be its own file. Um, 
and uh, we are going to make an NS mutable dictionary of, um, I'm just going to call it the Halls Dictionary. And this is going to be the dictionary we're going to use. We're going to get things out of here. If they exist already, then we're going to use it. Um, if they don't exist already, we're going to make it. Um, and that step is going to be a little bit of work, but hopefully it'll be a good skill that you can use for other situations. Uh, but then the, we'll start off with the basic uh, property stuff. Um, we'll start off with the same old um, property, but without the underscore. And then we'll synthesize the property with the underscore IVAR. And to be a good memory management citizen, uh, we will release it using the IVAR. And if this view gets unloaded, uh, we'll throw it away then too. Um, so now we've got um, a pointer to a dictionary. Um, at some point we need to, to create the initial dictionary. Um, it can be blank initially, but we need to create it somewhere. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that in the view did load. It works out well to put it there because if the view gets unloaded, it'll get made back. Um, and the dictionary that we're going to make is going to be very simple. Um, we're just going to use a knit, um, and that'll create a blank mutable dictionary. Use the book style for memory management. Cool. Um, so now we've got a blank dictionary, uh, which is great. Uh, hit Control B, just kind of make sure I've got no syntax errors. Looks like I'm still clean. Um, so that was step one, was making the dictionary. Um, now let's see how we're going to use it. Uh, so let's go into this function we're going to implement. Um, this uh, did press academic hall. Um, again, I went fast through that, but hopefully you've seen IVARs plenty. Um, so our goal is we want to um, see if uh, Munch Hall uh, already exists in the dictionary. Um, if it does not, then add it, um, and then transition um, to the uh, view controller's view. So the way this is going to look is like this. Um, Munch Hall um, is a specific subclass uh, called the Munch Hall view controller. Um, but what I'm going to do is uh, Munch Hall actually has a superclass uh, called Rolls Holman Academic Hall. <laughs> it's funny, it won't auto complete for me because this line is a syntax error. Um, but then once I remove the syntax error, it auto completes just fine. Uh, so Rolls Holman Academic Hall View Controller. Um, and I'm going to call this the Two Hall View Controller. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, self.holes dictionary, uh, object for key, um, and we're going to use these, um, these four pound defines are going to be our four keys. Um, these four pound defines are also the names that are on the four buttons. Um, they are also the titles of the view controller. Each view controller has a title, um, and in here I've set them as the title. So these, these are used in a lot of places. Um, and so the object for key uh, hall underscore munch. Um, so that's the key that we're looking for. And what we're going to say is um, if uh, the two hall view controller is nil, so if it didn't exist in the dictionary, um, then we're going to add it. Um, to add it, we're going to write a little helper function uh, called add hall to dictionary. Um, and we're going to pass it the name of the hall that we want to add. So add in munch hall. Um, this is just an ns string, but we're going to pass it to this function, and we're going to write this function such that it's smart enough to know what to create with it. 
um, and that'll work out just fine. So we're actually passing in a key, um, and we're just telling it to figure out what it needs to add. Um, and then once it's been added, uh, then we'll be able to um, call our transition from view controller to view controller with animation. Um, and we're going to transition to the two hall view controller. Uh, we're going to be coming from the main menu. Um, and for the animation type, um, let's see here, what did we use when we went to the map? Well, we used curl up when we went to the map. So let's just use the same thing for the munch hall. It'll make it look like it's behind the main screen. Cool. Um, so this is how we're going to get munch hall um, into the system. The function we've still got to write is this one. Um, so if it didn't exist in the dictionary, we've got to make it. Uh, no use in putting it off. Let's go ahead and write this function. Uh, being lazy, um, I'm going to put it near the top. That way I don't have to worry about making a uh, prototype. So this function received an NS string. Um, and this was the, um, the new hall name. So what we're going to do here, oh, and it actually did return something. Uh, what it returned is it returned um, a rolls holman uh, academic hall view controller pointer. Um, <clears throat> we could have also, by the way, called both of these um, UI view controllers, but um, I started typing rolls holman academic hall view controllers. So that's what I've used. I think in the slides I did the opposite, uh, but this should work out just fine. Um, also, if we're using this class, we better import it. Um, usually whenever I remember to import something, I do it right then, because otherwise I forget. Um, and this is the super class, um, which you only know because I'm telling you. That's the trouble with using other people's code, is you don't really know how the super classes and subclasses all work. But if you look at it, you can see Munch Hall is a subclass of this. Myers Hall is a subclass of this. Um, same with Crapo um, and the library. Um, so we're going to go ahead and add that one. Um, and then let's just go ahead and add um, all of the uh, subclasses right now. We're going to need to add the subclasses because we're going to make um, objects of each of these types at some point. Um, and if we add them now, then I won't forget to add them later. So there's the super. Um, and then here are all four specific subclasses of it. They're actually very similar. Um, if you'd wanted to, we could have done stuff such that we didn't even have to make a class, but it was fairly easy to make them subclasses. Um, so that's what I chose to do. Um, all right, so back to this technique. So if it didn't exist, so at this point we know that it didn't exist, um, so we're going to need to create it. Um, so Whenever I return something, this is just general, whenever I make a function that returns something, um, I often start off with um, creating it the first. So this is the new hall, and then I'm going to, at the bottom, return the new hall. And I kind of do it that way so I don't forget. Um, then in the middle, I better make it. Uh, now we've got to figure out which new hall we need to make. Um, so if the new hall name... Um, let's go and do a string comparison to, so a case insensitive compare to hall munch. If that is equal to ns ordered same, um, then um, the new hall should be a munch hall view controller. Um, with view controllers, you should use init with nib name. Um, however, if the zip has the same file name as the class does, you can just say init, um, and it will find it just fine. Um, and so at this point, um, it would make it and return it, um, and it, it would actually work. Um, but we should go ahead and add it to the dictionary, since that was the whole point, right? Um, so self dot uh, dictionary. Uh, set object for key. Um, so the object is the new hall, uh, and the key is the new hall name. 
once we've added it to that um, to the dictionary that routine that boost up the retain count up to two um, since the dictionary will hold on to it and that's all we really need uh, we can release it um, and that'll bring the retain count back to one so that way just the dictionary is holding on to it which is what we want um, this looks funny by the way that we release new hall um, and then we return new hall um, this is where it's really important to understand the difference between a pointer and an object, right? Um, so there is an object out there that's being pointed to by new hall. Um, it has a retain count of two at this point. Um, and by sending it a release, all we did is we brought it down to one. Um, but this pointer still points to it, and it's still got a, a retain count that's above zero. Um, so it doesn't matter that you released it and then you returned it. That's totally fine, since we know that its retain count was at two, right? Um, all right, so at this point we can go ahead and run it, and it should actually show up on the screen. Uh, so let's go ahead and give it a whirl. So if I hit Academic Buildings Bunch, uh, it should show up on the screen. Oh, no, it didn't. Um, huh, I know why it didn't. Um, and the reason it didn't... Um, actually, I don't know why it didn't. I'll have to figure out why it didn't. I figured out why it didn't. Um, so if you look, um, this is where doing a classroom would be really nice. Um, if you look here, I said from view controller, the from view controller is the to all. Um, yeah, that's backwards. Um, this is nice because if you had done this in a classroom, the whole classroom would have yelled at you when you typed that line and said, whoa, you did it backwards. Um, which is good because that means people are paying attention. Um, so let's try it now. Um, so I, I made it go to the to all. Um, coming from uh, this main menu. So if I click on it now, maybe it'll work. There we go. Um, and none of these buttons do anything yet. Actually, this one will. Um, this is a little modal view controller. Again, I don't even count modal view controllers whenever I'm thinking about the, the architecture of the, uh, this problem. Um, this, by the way, has a little bit of a description about this particular hall. This is Munch Hall, which is at Rolls-Holman campus. Um, Oh shoot, I made that text editable. That was a mistake. Um, and there's a little bit of history about Munch Hall if you uh, want to read it. I had a little fun uh, making this a history lesson in addition to an app. Um, so that one pops up and that's great. Um, let's go ahead and add the others uh, to this dictionary now. Uh, that way we won't have to do it later. Um, so let's go up to that add holes to dictionary function. Uh, let's add the rest of them. Um, so I'm going to add a bunch of else ifs. Boom, boom. Uh, need a grand total of four possible things that might get added. Um, so it might be Munch. Um, it might be Myers. Uh, it might be Hadley. Um, or it might be uh, Crapo. Um, if it's Myers. Then we'll make a Myers Hall view controller. If it's Hadley, we'll make it a Hadley Olin view controller. And if it's Crapo, uh, we'll make it a Crapo library view controller. Uh, some people, by the way, when they write if statements, they use a series of all four else ifs, and they know that it'll fall into one. Um, sometimes the um, <coughs> the um, static analyzer though will complain about that. Um, it doesn't really like it when you when you happen to know that it will fit into one of them. Sometimes it'll it'll yell at you, um, and it won't uh, it won't like it. Um, so it says that the argument might be undefined, um, and that's because it it doesn't it doesn't know what you know. It doesn't know that it'll fall into one of these. Um, so I guess perhaps the better programming practice would be to give it an else statement um, such that it'll always fall into a category. Um, and now if you do the build and analyze. Um, the static analyzer will be able to realize, yeah, it'll fall into one of the categories. So I guess I should get in the habit of making the last one a default. Um, that way I know that it's got a value. Um, that or I could protectively code to make sure it's not nil, but um, either way, I'll leave it like this. That'll work. Cool, so now we've done a little forward planning um, for whenever we're adding the other halls to this dictionary. Um, now we should be ready. Um, to any time we need to make one, uh, we can do a little trick like that to make it. Great, so we're doing good. Uh, we're trucking along. Um, we've um, got the ability to do the memory management for all the different halls. 
um, and we're able to put up the views uh, for Munch Hall. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to make these buttons um, on Munch Hall actually do something. So back to our checklist, um, and we're going to start going through uh, the things for the last group, uh, the academic halls. So we need to go create a protocol, um, and for this we've got an independent uh, file called the change hall protocol. Uh, if you look at <clears throat> what this um, view controller looks like button-wise, um, you can see that there's a menu button, uh, which will need to bring the menu back. Um, and then there's also um, a button to go to each of the other uh, view controllers. So really we're going to need an action for the menu, and then these others we're going to group um, into a single callback. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to pass in like what we clicked on, whether it's Hadley, Crapo, or Myers. Um, and so we're going to only have two um, <clears throat> methods. And what we want to do just to practice, uh, we're going to make them both optional. Uh, which means that somebody might choose to implement them, they might not choose to implement them. And to be perfectly honest, we know that we're going to implement them here. I just wanted to show you the optional thing. Um, so let's call them uh, Academic Hall uh, Did Press Main Menu. Actually, yeah, Academic Hall Did Press uh, Main Menu. Um, and then we're going to say which Academic Hall Just Press Main Menu. Um, the pointer that you pass back um, could be an academic hall, um, or just to kind of prove that it's possible, um, I'm going to go ahead and pass just a UI view controller. Um, that way this class has one fewer dependencies, not that it really matters. Um, and so it's um, <coughs> an academic hall view controller that is passing it. And then the other one um, is going to be an academic hall. Um, and this time we're actually going to go ahead and pass it in first because we've got a parameter to pass. So academic hall uh, did press a uh, hall named and then we'll pass in what the hall was named that they pressed on. Um, and I'll call it um, two hall uh, name. Not the greatest thing in the world. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and call this one um, the from hall. Um, and then that one will be the to hall name. Note that here we don't pass in uh, the view controller for the other hall um, because uh, one view controller doesn't know about another. So it can't pass in that other view controller. Um, all it can do is it can pass in the name of the button that was clicked on. Um, and then the root will have to take care of the rest. Um, so these are the two protocol methods that we've decided to make. Um, so the next thing we need to do is we need to create a delegate IVAR. So you can see here I gave them totally different names, but you know that was all right. The same style uh, was still the same. Um, so creating a delegate, uh, we're going to go ahead and do that in the superclass. Uh, that way all the subclasses will get it. Um, so you can see we've got a little placeholder here for to do created delegate IVAR. Creating delegates is easy, it's just id delegate. Create a property, a non atomic assign, uh, since it's a delegate. Um, and then instead of just saying id, we say um, you must implement the change hall protocol. That way, anybody that tries to become the delegate. Um, the compiler will help check to make sure, hey, did they implement this protocol? Uh, they better. Um, and then taking care of the other actions. Um, so we need to synthesize it since it's a property. Uh, but the nice thing is, is since it's an assign property, we don't have any memory management responsibilities. So there's no releasing in the alloc. There's none of that. Um, so it's kind of nice to do an assign property. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to, um, so you can see here's the slides that for doing that, we need to actually call those methods. Um, so you can see um, <clears throat> that 
Already the buttons are connected uh, to actions. Um, so there's an action for pressing main menu. Um, and then there's also an action for pressing uh, walk to hall. That means you pressed on one of the buttons. So what we want to do is we want to call these methods on our delegate um, in those situations. So for pressing main menu, uh, we want to call did press main menu. Um, and here we want to call um, academic call uh, did press hall named. Cool. So obviously I just kind of stuck it in here as a placeholder, but now I need to clean it up a little bit. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually check to see if the delegate implements this method and then call the method on it. Um, this is important anytime you have optional um, <clears throat> methods uh, in your delegate protocol. If they're optional, um, the delegate may not implement that one. And if you call it and they didn't implement it, um, then your program's going to crash. Um, that makes for a very bad user experience. So the typical style looks like this. Uh, first, you check to make sure that there is a delegate. So make sure I've got one and it's not nil. Um, and then we're going to say um, um, self uh, delegate uh, responds to selector. This is what Apple is doing all the time whenever it's got optional methods. Um, it'll check to make sure that you've implemented it uh, by saying, hey, does this object respond to the selector? Um, and if it does, then it'll call it. So the way this code works is you say what the selector is going to be called. Um, so you type in here what the selector is called. The selector is just um, the message, um, including the colons. Uh, but not including any of the formal parameters or the type of parameters. So that's the actual part of the selector. Um, and so the selector uh, for this one just looks like that. And if it exists, um, and if it implements it, uh, then we shall call it. Um, so we shall call academic call did press main menu. Um, and the thing we pass into it is self. So you always pass the thing that called it um, as the first parameter um, and one of these delegate protocols. Uh, next one looks just the same. Um, so if we've got a delegate, to be honest, I think it would work without checking to make sure that we've got a delegate because response to selector should return um, a false um, or a, a nil, I believe, um, if, if it is called on something that, that doesn't exist. But I uh, better safe than sorry. So we may as well check to see if it exists. All right, so trying to type while I was talking. Um, better to copy paste. So if it responds to this selector, oh, and I forget my closing bracket right there all the time. I don't know why. Um, so if it exists and if it responds to that selector, uh, then we're going to call it. So self.delegate um, academic call uh, from hall self. Uh, did press hall name. This one's interesting. Um, so <clears throat> they've clicked on a button to get here. Um, how do we get the name of the hall that they pressed on? Um, so <clears throat> the way we're going to get it is sender. Um, so sender um, is the button that they clicked on. So what we're going to do is we're going to say sender, uh, really you're a UI button. Um, and then sender um, is a UI button is a good first step, uh, but then to actually get the text, um, you need to um, get a property called title label, um, and title label is a UI label. So we need to get the sender's title label, um, and then from that we need to get the text. Oops, it uh, didn't close in the right place. Close there. Cool. Um, and so then that will get, and then add another one for the last one, uh, that will get the text from that label. Also, by the way, you could have um, used the dot syntax here um, if you'd wanted. I only used the square brackets because I wanted to do the typecast. Um, and it feels awkward to do the typecast and then use the dot syntax all in one step. I think it works. Um, 
but whenever I need to typecast something, I always use the uh, the bracket syntax. Um, just kind of gotten a habit to it. Not sure if it's required or not. Uh, cool. So let's go ahead and uh, save this up. <clears throat> and what we're doing now is we're doing all the child's task. Um, so that's great. Um, we're calling those methods. Uh, we've got our delegate all set up. Um, now we've got to implement it um, in the parent. So I realized that we kind of repeated the similar steps a lot of times in this example, um, but there's enough going on here that it's it's hard to keep straight even if you repeat steps um, a couple times. So the parent is going to implement the change hall protocol. Step one is to claim that you implement it. Uh, step two is to go actually implement it. Uh, the easiest way to implement it is to make a little pound pragma area, hold down command, double click on the word. Um, if you want to implement it, you can optionally implement uh, some of these methods. In this particular case, uh, we are going to implement all of the optional methods, which we knew we were gonna, but it was, I just wanted to show you optional methods. Um, if they press main menu, uh, what we want to do is we want to go back to the main menu. Um, so <clears throat> that's actually very similar to like the info view if they press the main menu. We want to go to the main menu um, and we want to go from, um, where we want to go from is we want to go from the academic hall view controller that got passed to us. Um, so by doing this, um, it will go back to the main menu. Um, and then now this one, um, I'll tell you what, for now let's just do a real quick, let's just put a log message here. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll get this one here in a sec. Let's try it. Um, so at this point, oh, I already know I forgot something. Um, when you click on this menu button, most of it is implemented, but not quite all. Um, the one thing I didn't do just yet um, is I didn't do this last step, set parent as the delegate. Um, so I still need to do that real quick. Um, so <clears throat> let's go do that. The best place to do setting the parent as the delegate is when you make the thing. Um, so right here in the add hall to dictionaries where I made the thing. Um, and so what I'm going to do is just somewhere in here, um, I'm going to set the delegate on the new hall to self. Um, I could do it at this point. Um, you know, just to share, I could do it after the word release. Um, that's still just fine um, because it's just a pointer to an object. That object still has a greater than zero retain count. Um, this will work just fine. Um, so now going back to the main menu should work. So I go into munch and I hit menu and it should come back. Cool. So doing good. I can go into the map. Um, I can go into the academic buildings um, and I can come back. Um, now let's implement clicking on these to go into different halls. Um, that's kind of one of the main parts of this app. Um, oh, I should have checked to make sure the log message came through, and it did. Uh, so let's go implement this. So putting up a new academic hall, um, we actually kind of started this process when we put up the very first one. Um, if you scroll up just slightly to when we put up the first one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code, and then I'm going to paste it here, and I'm going to make some changes to it. Um, so first I'm going to say, um, instead of looking specifically for Munch Hall, what we're going to be looking for is the two hall name. Um, so not specifically Munch, but the two hall name. Um, if it does not exist, then add it to the dictionary. So we're going to add the two hall name to the dictionary. Um, and we're going to transition to uh, the two hall, uh, but we're going to transition from uh, not the main menu, but we're going to transition from the from hall, uh, which is pretty slick. Uh, the only thing that we might want to change is right now it's always using a curl up animation. Uh, let's go ahead and run it, um, and let's see how a curl up animation looks all the time. So let's go to the academic buildings. This is Munch Hall. Um, if you walk through this hall, um, it should take you to Hadley. If you click on this, it'll take you into Hadley Hall. 
Uh, this is Hadley right here, uh, then Olin, then the Olin extension. Uh, you can see that there's info about each building in here. Had a little fun with my history lesson. <laughs> Couldn't come up with a good picture for Olin, so I just took an aerial view. Um, then the Olin extension. Very, very pretty building. Some nice classrooms there. Go down to visit Crapo in the library. Uh, this is Crapo Hall. Uh, this is the library. Some information about Crapo. Some information about the library. And go back over to Munch. And go over to Myers. Um, a little bit of information about Myers Hall here. Uh, these pictures look pretty nice. Um, you can see that the up curl gets a little old after a while. Um, <clears throat> I'm not saying that what I did is genius, um, but we can at least do better than up curl all the time. Um, so what I'd really like to do is I'd like to make a variable that I can change. Um, so I'm going to make a new variable of this type. Since I can't remember that syntax exactly, I'm just going to copy it from above. Um, so I need a uh, uh, UI view animation options. Um, what it really is is it's an enumerated type, so it's really an int, um, even though it doesn't look like an int. Um, and I'll just call it uh, transition type. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it um, depending on what type of view transition is. So set uh, dependent dependent uh, on the type of transition um, and I'm going to set its default, default value to none. Um, so up a little bit I've got um, all the options. None would at least look better than curl up and none might look the best to be honest. Um, if you set it to none you can see it just kind of magically appears. So you hit Hadley and it just appears, Crapo and it just appears. Um, none's a little jarring too, right? Um, so it works, it's just a little jarring. Well, it looks like something's weird with my menu bar in Crapo. Uh, doesn't really matter. So this one's a little jarring, um, but because setting all of them individually is a little tedious, um, I'm gonna steal it from the slides. Um, so this is where we set the delegate. Um, this is where we can put them all into the view, which is pretty cool. Um, and then this is the piece of code I'm going to steal. I might have to make some changes because I might have made different variable names, but it should be pretty close. Uh, so it looks like I called it from hall, from hall, which is good. Uh, to hall view controller, to hall view controller. Cool. Pick the same names um, and transition type. Um, great, so now this will set a different transition type depending on which type of um, academic hall it's going from and which one it's going to. Uh, so if you click on Myers, uh, it should kind of lift from the left. Munch kind of lifts going back. I was kind of disappointed, by the way, that there weren't options for like sliding the screen over. Um, it's disappointing because I know that the um, the the UI navigation controller, um, that's its only transition. Um, so its only transition is the smooth slide left to right. Um, but for some reason what they give uh, third party developers um, were these ones. I mean, let me know if I'm missing out on something because I'd really like to smoothly transition over. Uh, but I mean, whenever I go look at the, uh, whenever I go look at what's listed in the options, I mean, I don't see it. Uh, let me know if I'm missing it, but. Um, and the way I got there was I clicked on here are the animation options um, and I don't see any slide left in here at all. Um, so kind of disappointed by that. Um, let me know if there's a good way to do it uh, because, I don't know, it'd be nice to have that as an option. Um, at any rate, uh, you can see the other ones I used. Um, so I always had whatever I clicked on kind of lift from that side. Kind of gives it a back and forth effect. Um, and then if you click on Crapo, it kind of lifts from the bottom. Hadley kind of goes back down. Um, these don't look like amazing transitions. Um, and if you wanted to make custom transitions, I know that you could do this manually. Um, but I was just trying to use the uh, provided ones um, in the options. Um, cool. So this is, uh, this is an app that shows you how to go between different views. Um, you can see that you can dance around however you want um, into these different views. 
And the way a custom root view controller works um, is you're kind of responsible for a lot of things. You're responsible for all the children uh, making you the delegate. You're responsible for implementing all of their protocols. Um, and then you're responsible for swapping the views on and off um, and making these cool little animations. But you can see that they're all responsible uh, for their own modal view controllers, right? So they can have as many modal view controllers. I think in this demo, everybody had at least one modal view controller. Uh, some of them had multiple modal view controllers. All right, this one doesn't have a modal view controller. Oh, the other thing you can add, this is totally optional. Um, I added a little sound effect um, as well. Um, so whenever the main menu gets loaded, if you look in the view did load area, uh, there's a little uh, there's a little sound effect here. This is totally optional. If you uncomment these four lines of code, um, these will use the audio framework, the audio toolkit framework. So you have to add the audio toolkit framework. Um, so you can add that. Um, and now when you run it, it'll play some music. <laughs> so I just added a little uh, sound clip on there just to kind of be silly. Uh, the other thing I did, just because uh, I thought this app was kind of cute, is I submitted it to the App Store. Uh, it should it should probably be approved by now, assuming they approved it. They're really not that picky. Everybody complains about the review process, but I bet they approved this just fine. If it did get rejected, it would be for, um, what's the word they use, insufficient user functionality or something like that. <clears throat> but I bet they approve it just fine. Um, so this is a, a cool little uh, cool little demo uh, that shows you how to uh, swap different views in and out. I'll say that this is certainly not the only way to do it. Um, and I'll say that, that these two, tab bar controller and navigation controller, if your app design fits into one of these categories, use them, right? They're way easier to use than making your own. Uh, but there are times where it just doesn't fit, um, and you just have to make your own. Um, so this one was actually a hard one to make fit, um, per really only because of uh, I'm going to mute it now. Um, really, just because of this like loop connection that you can make here. It would have made for a good uh, navigation, except for the loop. So when we make it, we're going to make it in. We're going to make it with these other twos. We're going to make it with a tab bar. We're going to make it with a navigation. And when I make it with a navigation controller. Um, I'm just going to take out this loop is all I'm going to do. Uh, cool. So that's all we got for now. Uh, see you next time. We're going to make this with a tab bar, and we're going to make it with a navigation controller next time. See you then.